fandom initiated. You know, even down to visual effects and the post, you know, um, Dana's team at Flipbook like had <laughs> no time at all to do some of the stuff, especially because they kept fighting me because I was still trying to shoot models practically. Um, and uh, the, there was a mutiny in the ranks because someone, you can tell this story, someone did a little test, didn't they, Ben? It wasn't a mutiny. We were <laughs> being efficient and making sure we had all bases covered in case you couldn't shoot it. Love it. <laughs> so we Good said answer. we could work without it. And it looked all right. <laughs> so we did it that way. You're referring to Star Destroyer because I, if you're watching YouTube, I've got this model behind me. Uh, and uh, that was the first cast member. That's the first thing I bought. I was like obsessed with shooting everything exactly like Lucas would have done, you know. Um, and I just realized in terms of budget and time, you know, it, it seems sort of cheaper and easier to go shoot a model. But actually to do it to the level that you need to with motion control and the right sort of materials and the passes, and I, it, it's, it's, it's a huge deal. I just didn't have the time and the, you know, and I didn't have the knowledge. I'd learned a lot about trying to do it. So on, on a bigger budget thing, I'd love to, like, if you look at how, you know, Chris Nolan, you know, how he does like the Dark Knight and some of the amazing model stuff in that, I'd love to do it on that scale when you actually got a whole team um, doing it and have the budget and time to do it. So yeah, Ben uh, just sent me this file at some point. Uh, and I was like, oh, okay, cool, press play. And it was basically the Star Destroyer shot, like floating over the desert on one of Neil's drone shots. And I was just like, yeah, it's just, <laughs> yeah, it's just, that is it. That is the, that's the film. And there's no, and a model could not have done that, you know. Um, and we still used the model, didn't we, Ben? We still used it for reference. We, you know, it was it was hugely important actually for the ones where it's coming out of the sand because we filmed sand coming off it against blue and stuff and um, we used that in the layers on the comp a lot. Mm. Um, and the technical guys were thankful of that because trying to simulate that much sand falling was killing machines. So yeah. I was like, add some of these bits on it like we used to in the old days, and uh, yeah. it, and it worked and it it was it was because you need a lot of just texture and depth to those shots and it was it was vital that we had those i mean the, the shoots of the model itself if we had the time and calculations of each lens the light and all that kind of stuff it would have worked but mm -hmm. we were, you, we're running out of time fast <laughs> oh a fact even yeah. before you had the shots <laughs> you use the actual um, the model to kind of um dump sand onto as as a like a reference or you you use that footage in the comps that you put together. We use that, use that footage in the comps. Um, Phil shot, I think in his back garden, was it Phil? Yeah. <laughs> um, against the blue screen and poured the sand over it, it fell and then you shoot it at high speed and then use that in the layers and you track that into the shots and and yeah, and then you get more extra bits. And then we'd simulated our own sand going down our model and you just layer it up as much as possible. But yeah, yeah. if we didn't have that, it wouldn't have it wouldn't have wouldn't have been as good a sell on the shots. That's for sure. Mm. Yeah, I mean, it worked out in the end. It's interesting, you know. You can be so convinced as a filmmaker, like this is exactly how I'm going to do it, you know. And and you always have to kind of be that pig-headed about it because because nothing gets done, right? You've got, there's so many different ways of doing it. So you've got to go. No, I'm doing it that way, and we're going to run until someone, you know pulls a curveball, <laughs> you know, or there's, you know, I was like, I'm going to shoot practically, I'm going to learn all I can about doing it practically, this is it, you know, I want to try and honour that. Um, but then you just realise, like, you're just fighting a losing battle. But actually, if I'd not done that, then we wouldn't have had the model, we wouldn't have been able to shoot all the sand textures, and we wouldn't have, and, you know, so it did end up, you know, improving the shots. Um, so I'm glad we did it, but I am looking forward to doing more modern stuff you know, in the future. I think mainly it was, um, and I've worked with Flipbook and they've done amazing work. They've done, you know, commercial scale and stuff. Um, but, you know, when you work on something for three years and it's your baby and, you know, you're spending all this money on it and, you know, and by design, really, you've written a film that basically the end of the film, uh, you're going to hand over to some other people to do, right? 
because I don't do visual effects myself. You know, I don't, I don't do them. You know, I, I can tell you what I need and what I'd like and how it to look and give you notes, but I'm not the people doing it, you know? Um, so what, you know, I think the scary point for me was letting go, giving that such a huge sequence to someone else, you know, you don't do that. Even the film, like your know, performance wise, you're handing, handing over, like, you're not handing it over, but you know what I mean? Like someone else is saying those lines, but you're there directing it, crafting it, trying to get it the way that you think it should go. And they bring amazing stuff to it and, you know, and it develops and it's this thing. But to hand something over and go, there you go, Ben. Don't mess it up, you know, and, this, and such big shots. Because the internet is unforgiving, right? Absolutely unforgiving. They see something that doesn't look like, you know, Star Wars. Immediately, it, it's crap. You know, this is rubbish. This looks rubbish. And like, when those shots are like, what, 80% CGI, um, you're setting yourself up to fail, like massively. And I think it was me trying to shoot practically was a way of trying to keep some control, <laughs> I think. Um, but, I, you know, now I shouldn't have worried. So like, now I'm just, I'm so blasé now, Ben. I don't, you've created a monster. So I'm like, yeah, Ben will do it. He can set extend a Star Destroyer and make it look like a, a, the Star Destroyer bridge. It's fine. It's, it's fine. It's absolutely fine. So, uh, yeah, you, yeah, you create a monster. <laughs> I think the thing is that we, or especially I wanted to do it practically as well for the same reasons that Phil did. Um, but I also knew how long it might take and how difficult it would be to shoot it. So I was just yeah. making sure that we had something by the delivery date. Yeah. This is the fan-made fan film, film podcast. podcast.